grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my serious fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. So may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also. Grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the first book of Kings. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, move on to Seraphath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Seraphath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her. Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her. Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself. The God of Israel says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when our Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jug of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O oh my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Lord, Lord your face Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Lord, Lord your face us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. Lord, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your light shine before others, 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned. It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know from the Gospels that our Lord had given a mission to his mother. We know it from the Acts of the Apostles. In the days after the crucifixion, when the Apostles were very much afraid, when the Apostles didn't know what they were going to do, the Apostles were told, go to the upper room. My mother is there. She will gather you. So Mary gathered those who believe, and in their fear, in their confusion, in their doubt, she taught them. Mary guided them. And throughout history, and you have to look at things as they unfold in history. You know, as Catholics, we're not custodians of a book. The Catholic faith is something alive. The book tells us what God said and did. In the middle of the church, he is continuing to be active and to do. So we know from what happened in the early church that from time to time, God would send his mother to those who believed to remind them of what his mother said. In iconography, when you see the image of the Blessed Mother, of Our Lady Salvation of the Roman people, Our Lady Perpetual Help, in traditional iconography, you see the Blessed Mother holding Christ in one hand, and with the other hand, she's gesturing. To him. What she's saying is, do what my son tells you to do. That's what this gesture is all about. I presented my son to the world. He spoke to you. He teaches you. He is active among you in the sacraments of the church. Do whatever he tells you to do. This is the role the Blessed Mother was given. And in history, from time to time, he, she was sent from heaven, where she's in glory, body and soul. She was sent from heaven to continue this message, to speak to God's children, to remind them of what he taught and what he said. And we have in the history of the church many wonderful apparitions, messages that the Blessed Mother brought to the world at Guadalupe. She reminded, through Saint Juan Diego, she reminded the world that as the mother of all her son's believers, when they suffer, when they are in need, when they are oppressed, 
that she, as a mother, suffers with them. And it was a mother's reminder. My son told me to do this, so I do it. You are my children, and if you're suffering, I am too. At Lourdes, in 1858, the message that she brought to Lourdes was basically, God cannot promise you happiness in this world. And unfortunately, that's all that most people want. They want happiness in this world. Uh, I gotta buy the right things. I have to get the right insurance policy. I have to have the right retirement plan, and I will be happy. And the Blessed Mother said, no, my son doesn't promise you happiness in this world. If you pray with me, if you receive the sacrament, what he does promise you is that he can comfort you and strengthen you, and then when this world is finished, he will reward you. That is the promise of faith. And the Blessed Mother, through St. Bernadette, told the world, pray the rosary with me. Because when you pray the rosary, I'm at work. I, I'm there among you, healing you, comforting you, strengthening you, and giving you whatever possible peace you can get this side of heaven. That was the message of Our Lady of Lourdes. Today, our attention is called, in a very special way, to the apparitions of the Blessed Mother at Fatima in Portugal in 1917. And what she told us then was basically what her son had told us. And she came to remind us. And her reminder was this. Number one, you can't let what goes on in the world <clears throat> depress you. You can't let all the turmoil and all the confusion of the world rob you of your inner peace. And it will rob you of your inner peace. The world does that. Even this past week, I don't know, visitors didn't experience this, but in this area, they said, oh, there's a break in the water main. They said, you can't drink the water. Uh, oh, don't drink the water. Don't wash with the water. Don't cook with the water. Don't turn the tap. Someone very wisely said, you know, without absolute proof, that destroys our inner peace. That really, does. we have to live in constant fear. Uh, COVID did that as well. It told us of a world in which we must constantly be afraid of everything and anything. You know, when it said, you can't wash with the water, even if there are microbes in the water. Have you ever been to the Caribbean? You ever go to one of those islands? You're not supposed to drink the water in those islands. It, it, it's not purified the way our water is purified. Did you take a shower? Sure you did. I mean, I've been to Turkey, I've been to Egypt, I've been to Sudan. You take a shower, just don't open your mouth when you take a shower. <laughs> don't drink it. But it seems that in the name of protecting us, we're always getting bad news. We're always being warned. We're constantly being made to feel apprehensive. And the Blessed Mother, when she came to Fatima, says, you can't let what goes on in the world take your peace away. If we have God in our hearts, we have peace in our hearts. We have the peace of knowing that if I live a good life, if I keep the commandments, if I worship God, if I die in the state of grace, that God in his mercy will open the gates of heaven for me. And one day, I'm going to die anyway. 
whether I took a shower in that water or not, I'm going to die anyway. And I'm not going to be able to keep my life to 117. I don't want to. But I'm not going to be able to achieve that. But the world puts us on edge. And the world constantly tells us, oh, be afraid of this. Don't eat that. This week, you can drink coffee. Next week, oh, it's very bad for you. You know, the next day, oh, you can eat cereal. There was something on Google this morning. Oh, there's a lot of bacteria in, in your Cheerios. Don't eat it. The world, for whatever its reason, lacks the peace that comes from faith. And if our faith is weak, it can rob us of that peace. And the Blessed Mother message at Fatima was, there's a lot of turmoil in the world. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of fear. People do things to hurt other people. There's a lot of harm going on. You ask my son to bring peace into the world. You ask him to calm our fears. You ask him to help us be focused on him. You ask him to give us the strength to be in the state of grace and not to be afraid of the world. I share a story with you, and the story goes back to Mario Cuomo, who once upon a time was governor of New York State. He's a graduate of, I believe, St. John's in Queens. Mario Cuomo, Andrew's father, not Andrew, the father. Mario went to mass every day. But when he died, they gave a eulogy that lasted for half an hour, and no one mentioned the fact that he went to mass every day. They mentioned every bill he passed, every bridge he ever dedicated. Do you know any of the bills that he passed? No, I don't know what bills he passed. Do you know any of the bridges that he dedicated? No, he went to mass every day. God knows that. And when his soul went before God, God knew he went to mass every day. But the story goes <clears throat> that Mario Cuomo was on an airplane and he was with an airplane full of reporters and his staff. And the airplane was in trouble. It was going through a storm. And the pilot was giving instructions to the people about, well, if there's an emergency, this is what we have to do. And everyone on the plane, of course, was in a tremendous panic. But Mario Cuomo sat there very calm, and he sat there paging through a magazine, and they said, aren't you afraid? You know, this plane may crash. And Mario Cuomo said, aren't you in a state of grace? They didn't know what he was talking about. They had no idea what he was talking about. He said, aren't you in a state of grace? I can't fly the plane. I can't make it not crash. I can't stop the storm, but I'm in the state of grace. If this is my moment, as ready as a human being can be, I'm ready. I'm in the state of grace as far as I can tell. I receive the sacraments, I go to mass, I pray every day, I'm not aware of any mortal sins on my soul. Aren't you in the state of grace, he said. They didn't know what he was talking uh, about. This is the peace of your inner soul that the world will rob us of. If we read enough, listen enough, and just believe as if it were the gospel, everything that they're telling us, we're going to live in constant fear and apprehension. The Blessed Mother said, turn to my son, be in the state of grace. Pray for the world that feeds on fear. Pray for the world that manufactures hurt. Pray for them. Pray that they know what it is to be in the state of grace 
and they will calm down and stop being upset and upsetting other people. How is this going to happen? That's the second thing she told the children to pray for. Pray for the conversion of sinners. What is a sinner? I know I've often said, we think of sinners as people who go out and sell drugs in schoolyards. We think of sinners as people who commit murder or rob banks or burn down orphanages. Those are sinners. Well, that's one kind of sin. But the greatest sin committed in our world by the majority of people is indifference to God. Indifference. I don't hate you, God. I just don't need you. I don't dislike you. I'm not against you. But I got no time for you. I'm busy. I got places to go. I got things to do. I, you know, maybe when I get older, I, I may go to Mass. But the greatest sin is indifference. And the Blessed Mother told the children, pray for the conversion of sinners. Because as long as people are indifferent to God, they're going to only seek the happiness of this world. When people are indifferent to God and to his message, they're going to do things to hurt other people and not feel any guilt about it. Honesty isn't necessary for them because they don't have to worry about going to heaven. They just don't want to think about that there is anything after this life. And to the degree that people are indifferent to God, they're going to do hurtful and mean things. They're going to live on the edge of worry and apprehension, and they're going to spread it and think they're doing you a favor by spreading it. Fear is what they're going to live on. The pursuit of a happiness that they'll never find. The Blessed Mother told the children, you got to pray for sinners. You can't yell at them. You can't get angry with them. You can't turn away from them. You have to go to my son and you have to pray for them. And don't you and I know a lot of people who fit that category of indifference to God. And isn't it the truth? It may even have been us at different times, at different periods of our life. The Blessed Mother told the children, pray for their conversions. My son touches people's souls. If enough people are praying, sinners will be converted and the world will be a more peaceful, happy, and tranquil place because of it. Pray for the conversion of sinners. This message that Our Lady brought to Fatima is as valid for us today as it was when Christ spoke the words, as valid as it will be a thousand years from now. <clears throat> Just as the Blessed Mother is sent from heaven periodically to touch people with her son's message, to do what she does in traditional iconography and point to her son. Listen to my son, she tells us. The statue reminds us. It's a pilgrim statue. It goes from place to place. Why? To remind people of the Blessed Mother. To remind people <clears throat> of her role and what she tells us. To remind us of the message that her son gives us each time she comes. And just as she has visited different places with her son's message, so symbolically, this image, which for so many years has been going from place to place to remind people, we gathered together all afternoon, all evening. There have been people in church. 
coming to the Blessed Mother in prayer, doing what her son asked us to do, doing what she reminded us. Pray for peace in the world. Pray for the fear and the worry and the apprehension that the world lives in that has nothing to do with going to heaven at all. Uh, pray that people will turn to God. Pray that their indifference will suddenly blossom in faith. Because when they do that, there will be peace in the world. There will be peace of soul. If each member of a family could do that, God's peace would reign in that house. Blessed Mother, you come to us symbolically today, and we're gathered here in order to hear what you are touching our souls to teach us as you taught at Fatima. Help us to believe in the power of prayer. Help us to know what is true peace in the world and in our souls. Help us not to listen to the world. Help us to tune in and listen to your son. And please convert us a little more each day and bring to faith those who have wandered away. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. that through the intercession of the Blessed Mother of Fatima, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, especially as we celebrate the apparition of Our Lady at Fatima, to proclaim your kindness 
as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory. Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy, 
Remember, brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Dare to say, Our Father, Lord, 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 Lord. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we, who rejoicing in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mysteries of our redemption, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.